everybody. Welcome to the SCB Steelers podcast presented by Deck Roofing Incorporated of South Florida. I'm your quarantined host, Steel Dad. Thank you for joining us. You'll notice we were off Thursday. We're recording on Monday. It's been a shit show around here, but we'll do the best we can to entertain you and bring you the latest opinions and thoughts and well, let's be let's be totally honest. The straight facts on your Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, joining me are uh, the usual uh, three Musketeers, uh, Ben, Ian, and Scarps, all in their particular well dungeons. Uh, well, Ryan, not, not Ryan, but uh, uh, Ian. He's right in the family room there. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Ben, I sometimes wonder if he's not like in his closet. <laughs> uh, yeah, we used to. Well, yeah. or or funny. in the bathroom, you know, that's where dads get privacy. They go into the bathroom and close the door. <laughs> that is incredibly true. <laughs> um, and a quick shout out to Matt, who I know will be listening to this episode. <laughs> he used to, back in the early days when we were doing this show, he would go in and do the show from his bathroom <laughs> because it's the best place he could get, like like the the signal, the the acoustics. Literally, he would sit on his freaking toilet and do the show. Uh, I kid you not. Wow. I hope you got a I hope you got a laugh out of that. Um, anyway, guys, I hope uh, everybody's well and and all that. And the Steelers wrapped up the rookie mini camp this week, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, also, they have now done second interviews with five candidates uh, for the general manager position. Three outsiders, two uh, guys inside. We'll touch on that a little bit. And I, I know uh, we'll definitely get to the schedule uh, as well, but I know all of you, what you want to talk about, first and foremost, is how excited you all are for Antonio Brown to uh, come back and retire yeah. a Pittsburgh Steeler, sure. um, which I, I think on this particular program, we probably said, I don't know how many times we thought this is what was going to happen. He was going to get his way out of Pittsburgh any way necessary, um, and one day he would come crawling back, and today was the first of, of his many crawls. Um, and, and so, Ben, I'll just, I'll just turn it right over to you. Um, your thoughts on Antonio Brown wanting to come back to Pittsburgh? He's batshit. That's my first thought. I mean, I one of the first times we ever had Ryan on this show as a guest – I asked him point blank. I was like, it, it was during the 2018 deal when he, when AB was trying to get off the team and, and we all knew what the hell was going on. And I said, is this a mental health crisis? And I still maintain that it was a mental health episode that led to all of that. And that he's surrounded by a group of sycophants. That's kiss asses for you. The, those of you out there that don't like big words, who tell him no matter what he does, he's right. And given that kind of environment and the fact that this guy's a narcissist, he is going to believe that whatever he wants is, in fact, true and correct and and do that. And now he's changed his mind and what he wants is something different. He wants to come back to Pittsburgh, which shocks the shit out of me, given the fact that he basically left town with a can of gasoline pouring behind him and a torch in the other hand and threw it over his shoulder as he hit the, the, the Fort Pitt tunnel. I mean, the, the guy just, I, I, I don't know what the hell he's thinking. I, <laughs> well, Listen, I'm going to, I'm going to get to Ryan because Ryan knows this better than any of us. So I, Ian, go I ahead. was kind of hoping go Ryan ahead. would tweet at him today and piss him off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, all I was going to say was Pittsburgh has 446 bridges <laughs> and somehow Antonio Brown managed to burn all of them on his Everyone. way out of town. On. Everyone. All right. Good. Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah. So, um, we got some notes here, but no, um, so, <laughs> And so I, all, right, all of this happened between July 2018 and September of 2019. Okay. 14 months. Okay. He arrived to training camp in a helicopter, which is probably the least uh, concerning thing that happened on this list. <laughs> um, that training camp, he threatened uh, Ed Bouchette, who just retired. Uh, called, called him a racist. 
Yeah. Uh, he threatened yeah. Jesse Washington uh, for a piece that he wrote. And AB had multiple opportunities to, to speak with Jesse or comment on it. And he didn't. But then he threatened to break his jaw. Uh, he mm-hmm. deleted all those tweets. Mm-hmm. Um, he also left camp during that time. Uh, they called it an injury. Um, mm-hmm. But I think uh, there are other uh, there are other uh, rumors out there as to why he left camp. There uh, are. Then, you know, some asshole named Scarpino um, <laughs> tweeted something that didn't mention him. I didn't add him. I just said A.B. and said that she thank his lucky stars because he got drafted by the Steelers and Ben got him paid. And he, quote, tweeted that with trade me, let's find out. And I got to experience the true (laughs) evil of Twitter and social media. You all know who you are out there. You should be ashamed of yourself. It's not funny. We should not be laughing. should not be laughing. It's kind of funny now. Looking back on it, it, it's funny. Um, And then he didn't show up that day. Uh, that was after the Chiefs game, after he had a little temper tantrum. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden it was quiet. And then he got busted, uh, speeding ticket. McKnight and then mm-hmm. his final game. This is what blows my mind. His final game. Wait, you forgot game. you forgot about him like destroying the water cooler on the sideline. He did that too, remember? That was 17, wasn't it? No, I thought it was that year. That, that was, was 17. Year. I think it was 17. I could be wrong, though, Ian. Fact checkers, get the fact checkers uh, yeah. out. Fact we'll get the it, was, checkers. it was when Landry Jones was playing quarterback. Yeah, fact checker, will you get on that? Yeah, Thank and you. and and, I'll, and this is what blows my mind is his final game is is a Steeler. They lost at the Saints, but he had fourteen for one hundred eighty five and two touchdowns. Yeah, uh-huh. and let's uh-huh. not act like seven was it, seven was still on his game back then, and seven and him were still connecting. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden he just quit, even though they were still in a playoff hunt, he quit. And then as Tomlin lied for him at the end of season presser, he was on live Instagram or whatever with James Harrison. Mm -hmm. And at that point, James Harrison and the Steelers were still a little, uh, there was still a little some tension there. Yep. Then he crapped on Juju called Ben a loser, which led Richard Mendenhall to call Ben a racist. He Uh called then Antonio Brown called the league racist. Uh He burned his toes uh, in a cryotherapy chamber he re- when he got traded to the Raiders, then he refused to change his helmet. Uh, then he skipped a workout and got fined heavily, and he posted those fines on social media. He called Mike Mayock a cracker. Uh, he was released and signed with the Patriots, had one game with them, caught a touchdown from the GOAT. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then he uh, was sued for sexual assault, and then he was cut by the Patriots because he was threatening that person via text message. And that all happened in 14 months. So if anybody out there wants Antonio Brown to play, for the Steelers again, I, I have no idea what to say to you. And if anyone out there thinks that Antonio Brown is going to sign a one day contract and everything and sing Kumbaya with the Steelers uh, and retire as a Steeler anytime soon, you are sadly mistaken because I don't see that organization ever accepting him back. They accepted James Harrison back. James Harrison won a Super Bowl, had probably the most probably the greatest play in Super Bowl history. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and whether or not he was sleeping in meetings, we'll never know. But that can that was smoothed over. But what Antonio Brown did uh, when he left here in that whole season, and there there, there is plenty, I guarantee you, there's plenty more stuff that happened behind the scenes. And I know, I know that for a fact. We had no idea what was unfolding that 2018 season. So it's a pipe dream if you think that the Steelers are just going to welcome him with open arms. Maybe one day down the road they will, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. And and to be very clear, and I, I don't want to sound like we're more important than we are because we're not, uh, but – Ryan has, you know, told us some things in confidence that that we won't share here. And just just to reiterate the point he was making about 2018, there was a lot of stuff going on uh, that that never got out. And you know, I'm I'm sure guys like Ed Bouchette and those guys know about it and and how they held their their tongue or pen, if you will. It's truly amazing. But uh, Ben, I, w- I want to ask you because you know we we've we've talked about it before. I mean. Is there any arguing that the guy is a Hall of Fame talent? No, he, he absolutely is, 100%. And, and he deserves to get in, and it may be a situation where he's pissed off enough people that he won't get in on first ballot. Mm-hmm. He should. 
but look at what happened to Terrell Owens. You know, he didn't get until his third try. Mm-hmm. And and AB may be a situation along those lines because he's pissed a lot of people off, frankly. And the press votes for those right. guys. And, you know, I, I don't know who's going to be presenting now for Pittsburgh, but he may not do a stellar job of presenting the guy either because he pissed a lot of people off in Pittsburgh, for and, example. And, yeah, um, and just but to, you know, back to yeah. to what we were talking about before when you you know we we talked about the fact that there were a lot of things going on in the background. If even half the shit I heard about Antonio Brown is true, the guy has huge issues, huge. Okay, and that's half. And these are the things I've heard at this distance. I guarantee you, the beats. The guys that work the team every day know all kinds of shit that never came public because the Steelers protected him. Mm-hmm. And when he left, teams stopped doing that. And that's why all that crap came out. And that's part of why Antonio Brown said, I never knew I had it so good. Yeah, you did have it good. Well, yeah, the guy's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, yeah. And do you think he gets into the Steelers uh, Ring of Honor, uh, Hall of Honor, I should say, at any point? Oh, that's a great question. So I mean, it's automatic if you get into the Hall of Fame. Uh, ben just stole it my is. thunder. Yes, it is It is automatic yeah. if you get into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Um, I'd say it – I mean, the, the current crew of people that vote on the Hall of Honor I don't think would put him in. Mm-hmm. Um but you know those people are going to change over time um yeah. and and you know it's it's one of those things where like eventually maybe they come around to it but not in the near term no i mean he's he's not going to get in you know shortly after he retires it's <laughs> whenever that might be um is you antonio know, in uh, I don't think he's in the Hall of Honor yet. I think he yet. will be. He will be. Too. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think he San, is yet. But San I think Antonio he'll be. just like officially retired a couple years ago. I think you had to be retired at least three years. Yeah. Um, to get into the Ring of Honor or the Hall of Honor, whatever they call it, Hall of Honor. Yes. Um. So yeah, I I don't think San Antonio officially met the stipulations yet. Um. He, he could be coming up this year. There are a lot of guys yeah. That yeah. eligible for that that are yeah. that are really deserving. I, yeah, yeah, you know, and they they've done, I will say this for for the you know the guys who have done the the selections they've mm-hmm. done a very nice job of you know the the inaugural class trying to get in some of the older guys that right. they knew probably weren't going to make the Hall of Fame but gave significant contributions to um, you know the the Steelers history over time. Um, this past year, putting Tunch Oaken in, like Tunch yeah. deserved to be in for everything he gave this franchise oh, no forever, question. you know. Yeah. yeah, but just the the fact that they, you know, was he gonna get in in 2021? Maybe, maybe not. But with his health issues, like they did the right thing and put him in this year. So, like, you know, he 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 deserved to be in. He was gonna be in at some point. Um, you know, were there? I. He deserved to be on. I'm glad yeah. they put him in. Yeah. Is, is what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. And and you know they've they've done a nice job of that over time with some of the you know some of the older guys mm-hmm. like Larry Brown getting in, Mike Wagner getting in, John Kolb getting in. Um. But you know just now the last couple of years we've started to see some of those guys from the early '90s teams that I grew up watching. You know your your Carnell Lakes, your Lewis Lips. Um. Those guys starting to get in. Um. You know. Yeah. That, that I think San Antonio will get that in. That was a great very defense, soon. man. That was that a great was. defense. The, San Antonio the retired. Man. San Antonio retired in 2017, and I I have to correct myself for basically a stipulation I put out there today, which was that the Steelers wouldn't even give a returning player a press conference because they gave one to to San Antonio Holmes in 2017. He didn't sign a one-day contract, but he came back You're and he, right. he, he mm-hmm. did a retirement presser in Pittsburgh and said it's an honor to retire as a Pittsburgh Steeler. And didn't didn't Cordell right. Stewart do yes. one too? It yeah. was in, it was more of an it was more of like a it wasn't as formal though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he did he did it, but it was like outside the building. And actually, right. I, I want I, I I might be wrong, but I maybe it was that lockout year. I I could be wrong, but it was mm-hmm. yeah, it was weird. Um, just just my, my final point about AB and I, and I say this and I will put all the BS aside. He was probably the best receiver in the NFL 
uh, 2013 to 2018. And, and yeah. he was great. And there's no question. And the guy throwing it to him was great. Um, and AB absolutely is a great wide receiver. I don't necessarily think that makes him a Hall of Famer. I, I, I don't. I, I think part of being in the Hall of Fame is longevity um, and being great for an extended period of time. And I agree that 2013 to 2018 is. But in my opinion, he's not Larry Fitzgerald. He's not Jerry Rice. He's not even close to Terrell Owens. He's not Randy Moss. And I'm not saying that he has to be just to get in. He's, I, I, also, I think he's. I think he's Terrell Owens. I. I, I don't think he's. He's in the, in the same class with the guys you just mentioned bef look, you know, before. Before that, look, look at the look at those numbers again. But I would say this. He and 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 this is going to rub people the wrong way. He was a better. He was he was better than Hines, and I yeah. hate it. He was. Yeah, no, he, oh, was. Yeah. he was. And yeah. Hines. Hines is more accomplished though. And Hines. Thank God. And <laughs> Hines may never get in. Hines is never getting in. So nah, he's going to get caught in the water. <laughs> Hines then, is never getting in. Ever. And then getting back to the ring of honor, uh, guys like Jason Gilden. Uh, Jason mm -hmm. Gilden's not in. He was the all time sack leader for a long time. Joey Porter is not in. Um, and you, I, I can't think of the Super Bowl 40 without Joey Porter. So right. anyway, yeah. um, but yeah, I, you know, we'll see, but I, I can't, I'm, I could put the bias aside and say that, yes, he was great. I just don't know if that automatically okay. means he's in. If you're the best wide receiver in the NFL for five seasons, you're getting in. Well, I, I think the, the, the one problem, though, the, and we've talked about this before <clears throat> in relation to Heinz Ward, is there's such a backlog of wide receivers for the Hall of Fame yeah. that, like, guys who should be in, which like is Isaac voters, Bruce had to wait, and Marvin yeah, Harrison which, had to which wait. Which is how the voters are going to justify making it worse. Wait, making yeah. him wait a year or two or three because he's an asshole. Yeah. They're going to say it's obvious this guy should be in, but other guys have been waiting longer because it's such a backlog of wide receivers. Yeah. So we're not going to vote for the prick this year. We'll <laughs> wait a year or two and we'll let him in. I'm telling you that that's what they did with Owens. Yeah. And, and they're going to do it again because they don't like him. The end. Well, that, and that's a big piece of it. The likability. It is. I mean, you think Larry uh, Fitzgerald's going to have to wait? I got news no. for you. Nope. No. no. But uh, he's no. Larry Fitz is so much better. Well, I don't know that he is so much better. He's he he very better. good. Oh, yeah. He was an excellent teammate on top of being an amazing talent. Okay. He, he will, played the shitty quarterback. He will always be the guy to me. What he if played he played with Kurt played, Warner? He's in the Hall of Fame. You know, later on. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know. Kurt Warner should not be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, but like, uh, <laughs> yeah he should. Uh, he was that good. You know what? Him and the Steelers. Gloves. The Steelers in 2008 averaged giving up 181 yards of passing per game. No, excuse me. It was 198 yards of passing per mm -hmm. game mm -hmm. throughout the regular season. Warner threw for 181 yards on them in one quarter in the Super Bowl. Yes, the guy is a Hall of Famer. Absolutely. Did he if, throw if, the if, most if, infamous pick in Super Bowl history? He did. <laughs> but he that, did. But that was also it, it, they knew that that was a great instinct by Harris. It was. It was because, Harrison because Harrison it, read the play and, and backed off and boop gone. I mean, there's um, a couple plays in that game that the Steelers might not have six Super Bowls. So, oh, for yeah. sure, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, hey, speaking of great linebackers, uh, real quick, uh, I think Ian was the one that pointed out uh, Vince Williams is is a linebacker coach now for uh, Pine Ridgeland wow. High School there uh, in the Bird. Good for him. Thank I think you. that's great. I, I think he's he's a guy that I thought early on kids, would end man. up being. I thought he'd be a coach a long time ago, and if this is the beginning of, of maybe a long uh, uh, trek of being a coach, then then great and good luck to him. Good yeah, for those there's kids. there's a lot of former Steelers that are coaching high school around here, um, so it's it's pretty cool to see. That's excellent, excellent. Yeah. Hey, uh, before we get to the schedule, just a reminder that uh, we are presented by Deck Roofing Incorporated of South Florida. Deck serves Broward in the southern Palm Beach counties. Whether it's commercial, industrial, residential, multifamily, or condos, contact Deck Roofing today by visiting deckroofing.com. And uh, safe travels to my uh, daughter as she heads down to... The deck bar this week. She'll be down there for a week of R and R after graduating college, and I know the deck family you, will treat her right. You sent her to South Florida. 
Uh, I didn't, but t- believe me, she doesn't. She won't go far off the uh, the the deck reservation. Uh, Did Steel Mom send her down there? Uh, no, Ben. She's a, a young woman. She's an adult. She can. Did you tell her to, to pack a spare liver at least? <laughs> well, they surprisingly oh. right at the end of the deck bar, you can purchase one of those. Ah, uh, yeah, you can get a you can get a spare That's liver. Uh, that also, is super kid, convenient. Kidneys as well. Uh, I guess the big thing I'm going to be curious about is if they're still on their kick of this peanut butter whiskey. Uh, that's that's gonna. I got I need, two in my need... fridge, man. I forgot about it. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay, now we've got, got it. now we've got something to work on for the uh, future shows here. I got a friend. He's a guy, also a Steelers fan. <laughs> he's a guy. All right, <laughs> who mixes that shit with Chambord, which is a raspberry liqueur. Oh, and he calls it a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Oh. That, that just sounds revolting, it Shane. Does. What the fuck is wrong with you? Uh, it does. It's probably really good. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> uh, Since Mark okay. never asked what we're drinking, I have this I Jim do. Beam that was aged uh, in double oak barrels and is Ooh. delicious. Oh, very nice. nice. Yeah, so twi- nice. twice barreled uh, in oak casks. Very good. Okay, excellent. Scarves, what do you got going tonight? Uh, zero percent alcohol from John Eagle. Uh, it's a uh, fruition. It's a little sparkling water. I'm, getting, I'm cutting back. I'm getting a little chubby. I hate it. So, oh, let me be in my well, let me be in my feels. Okay. All, I'm right, all back. right, Ben. What are you uh, working on there? Uh, hazy IPA from uh, <laughs> Georgetown Brewing. I think very nice. Uh, hazy little thing. Hazy little thing. Uh, hazy little I'm, thing. It's actually I'm currently working on water. Um, water. Oh yeah, yeah. you're I'll getting probably, over the Corona. Yeah, I'll probably break out a beer at some point just because I can't stand not having one right now. Um, <laughs> you know, whiskey I, is if, good for like colds and stuff. Oh, let me let me tell hot you, toddy baby, I, yeah, should have made I, a hot toddy exactly. Yeah, uh, I'm guessing that combined with these uh, drugs I'm on would would put me in a fine mood. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so the Steelers schedule 2022. Um, Ian, your initial yeah. thoughts as you look at this, and again, I, I'm just going to preface, we are the type that when we look at the Steelers' schedule, we don't jump to these, oh, well, they're going to go, uh, you know, 10 and 7 and things like that, because there's so many things that are going to happen between now and when these games are actually played. But on paper, when you look at it, Ian, what are your initial thoughts? It is an awesome schedule for season ticket holders. There are five oh, one o'clock. for the team? Ian. There are five the one team. o'clock Selfish. Sunday games. There are no home Monday night games, no home Thursday night games. And the the home night games are uh well the Sunday night against the Bungles, and then the Saturday night, Christmas Eve against Vegas, which is a really cool thing that it the is. NFL did matching up the Steelers and Raiders basically the day after the 50th anniversary of the immaculate reception. So good on the NFL for doing that. Um, But, you know, I mean, we already knew the teams we were playing. We now know the order, you know, with the 17th game, we have nine road games this year. So the, the front half of the schedule before the bye week basically the first two months, we only have three home games um, with, and, uh, you know, in, in five away games. And then the back half is a little more loaded towards home games, but still, mm-hmm. you know, it, there's a couple points in the schedule. Like we've back-to-back road games in Miami and Philadelphia, then back-to-back road games in Indy and Atlanta. Um, you know, it's, it, it is what it is. Yeah, um, at least they're all in Eastern time. Zone. That is, I was getting there, Ben, you keep stealing <laughs> my points tonight that, uh, you know, for those that have read my uh, articles on steelcityblitz.com about, uh, the Steelers' terrible records when they travel outside the Eastern time zone, you will know that distance doesn't matter. They're actually pretty good in Florida. It's the fact that they change their watches even by an hour that screws up their records. So, um, yeah, all the games are in the Eastern time zone this year, which is great. Um, and the one other thing I'll mention is, you know, when they drafted Kenny Pickett, we talked about how a lot of times – teams will start the veteran bridge quarterback for the first half of the year up through their bye week and then over the bye week transition in their rookie because it gives an extra week to prepare Mm -hmm. well not only do we have a bye week right smack in the middle of the season this year 
But mm-hmm. following the bye, we have two home games, and the first one is against a non-conference opponent in New Orleans. And we've seen in previous years, they've been a little more flexible with those non-conference games and been like, oh, we'll, we'll rest a guy another week who may, like, if we had played the Ravens, this guy would have played, but we were playing, mm-hmm. you know, the Cardinals, so he rested again. Um, so, it, you know, that they don't necessarily, I, they still care, don't get me wrong, but like, they don't put as much weight on right, those non-conference it's not as games. Emphasized. They, they don't count for the tiebreakers. So, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, yeah. That that I'm saying that if you're you're looking at if Pickett doesn't win the job in training camp, as soon as Mitch Trubisky throws his first pick, everyone on Twitter is going to be screaming for Kenny Pickett. But I think if you look at it logically, that that bye week followed by two home games with New Orleans and Cincinnati is a real good opportunity, unless Trubisky's lighting it up, for them to potentially transition to Pickett. I, I want to get. Ryan and Ben's thoughts on the schedule, but then I, I do want to come back and, and talk about some uh, some possibilities. Let's say um, be, because you're raising some interesting points about Pickett versus Trubisky and, and so on and so forth. Uh, ben, what was what, what's your thought on this uh, schedule? What what jumps out to you? Well, first, I want to respond to Ian's point about starting Pickett versus New Orleans. I I don't want to start any rookie versus that defense. I think that they'll chew him up and spit him out and destroy his confidence. So I, I would not start him that game unless Trubisky is stinking it up, in which case, well, you know, got to go to the other guy, (laughs) try and got to try and generate a spark somehow. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're three and six going into the bye, what do you have to lose? You know, and that leads me to my next point. I think the opening six games in this, in this schedule are fucking brutal. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a real possibility the Steelers could start like two and four, one and five, and still win nine games. And all of us go, wow, that was the greatest job Tomlin ever did. I'm, I'm being serious mm-hmm. when I say this. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, it ain't pretty. I'm I'm just telling you. The only game I see in the first month that's winnable is the Jets. Um, they open with the Bungles, who are going to stomp the living shit out of them because they want to. <laughs> One, it's Pittsburgh, and they hate them. And two, you know, they've got a chip on their shoulder. And maybe they should. They're a young team. They lost mm-hmm. Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Maybe they should mm-hmm. have a chip on their shoulder. Um, they didn't get a, a, a premium slot in week one. Um you know, it's just a it's a regular one o'clock game on a Sunday, home versus Super, the Steelers. Super Bowl losers you know, have have a very bad be, track record. Yeah, they're going to be fired up. Their fans are going to be fired up. They're going to come out. They're going to want to stomp Pittsburgh, and I don't mean mm-hmm. by a little. They're going to want to beat us by three touchdowns. And they like last, like, time. Like last year. Yeah, they <laughs> have it. the talent. Kind, kind of like that. Two, that 2011 game against Baltimore where they beat us what was it 35 to 7? Yeah, yeah, when when they when Harbaugh was going for two point conversion, going for two, yeah. yeah, yep, assholes. Anyways, go on. Then ben. they then they got the Pats. Okay, then they got mm-hmm. the Browns, and you know who knows? Deshaun Watson may or may not be suspended. No fucking idea what the he NFL meets is with do. the NFL this week. As a matter of fact, then they've got the Jets week four. Hey, that's at home. So that to me is the winnable game first month. Mm-hmm. Then they're at the Bills. Then they got Tampa at home. Tom Brady coming in on Sunday. Uh, that's we've uh, seen that yeah. movie before. We yeah, have no. once or twice. So uh, you know he's not Mike Glennon. So just relax, okay? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's uh, Mike Glennon. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I should just relax about that. <laughs> okay, but the the first six weeks are are pretty tough. Yeah. And Man. and yeah, I think they could open with a really bad record and discourage a lot of fans, and then turn it around later because they always they always fucking yeah. do, yeah. they always fucking do. Ryan, what do you think? Uh, well, the most important thing is um, uh, I accurately predicted the bye week and the final three weeks of the season. Oh, well um, done. But looking at it, that bye week is just is you looks did. really really nice. That's, Doesn't that's it? a, it's that's perfect a time. good good yeah. time. However, <laughs> you look at the stretch before the bye week; those first eight games. Ben talked about the first six. I'm worried about all eight. Um, 
Last time they visited Philadelphia, they uh, got stomped by Carson Wentz. Last like two times they visited. The last three times they visited Philly have been Yeah, bad. Hey, we, we, do guys, not, we do not. Yeah. I mean, old for their last nine. Previous, the previous one was what? Oh, eight Super Bowl year. We lost, but we yep. won the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was that the was that the year Ben got sacked like nine times? Yes, yeah. it, it was. It was. It was. Te- it, yeah, it was yeah. terrible. Yeah. Um, so what what Ryan is saying is Kenny Pickett will be starting Week Ten. No, so no, no. That's I, what I so, said. Yeah. So it, I know. I know. He's exactly. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get. No, to that. I actually. I actually. We'll get to that. I'll say. I'll save it. But um, that that that's a tough eight games. And then yeah. even afterwards, and you look at this, and and I'm and you know I'm not I'm not pulling any punches here, but it's heavy heavy AFC North. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You got at Indianapolis, and yes, they have a good record against the Colts, but you know what, the Colts should be improved. Um, okay, at Atlanta, so what? But you know, at Carolina, who I, who knows? I'm going that, to that game, the Carolina yeah, who, game. I mean, and, and we're all you know, we're not predicting records here, but you never know what could happen. But then. They Nine don't have the. They don't have a good record against the Raiders. Now no. you got Devonte Adams. No, you know, that's not it, true. They have a pretty good record against the Raiders at home. They have a terrible record on the West Coast. Well, so the last two times they played the Raiders at home, they lost last yeah. year. Yeah. And the year before that, it was a shootout. I think it was like 38, 34 38, or something yeah. like that. I think it was Derek Carr was zinging it everywhere. But mm-hmm. anyway, you know, I look at. You, they always, well now you can't go in quarters anymore. You can't go four four games at a time because there's 17 games. But mm-hmm. um, I, I, that is a t- that's a tough schedule. I understand they don't leave the Eastern Time Zone, but they do make some trips. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I, I every, you know, I, people on Steelers Twitter was like, oh, they, oh, what this is a great layout. What? What? How do you even know? First of all, it's not. Second of all. <laughs> Seriously, like, just take your fucking sorry, take your Yinzer fucking color. Yes, yeah, yeah, take your Yinzer <laughs> glasses off. Like, like this team, this team. I don't know if they're going to be any better. I don't know if they're going to be any better than they were last year. And, and why is that, Ryan? Where, where are the question marks for you? Uh, I, and I'm we'll being be, serious. Uh, for, for the for, if we're going to talk defense, I is Stefan Tuitt really coming back? Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to be interested to see where he's at at OTAs. Um, if he's there at OTAs, um, this pass defense was not good against good quarterbacks last year. Do, can you really expect TJ Watt to get 20 sacks every year? I don't know. You got to stay healthy on defense. Um, on offense, their line was garbage last year. They're going to have to put that together. They still have not replay. They still have not acquired, at least in my opinion a competent running back to spell Najee. They have a very young wide receiver core, one that's, uh, you know, one that needs to grow up a little bit. He has mm-hmm. sky is the limit. Um, they got a bunch of raw talent in that room. Um, yeah, they have a good tight end. So be it. Um, and there's question marks of quarterback. All yeah. right, thanks for listening. I think quarterback is, is unproven. Solid. No, I, I completely <laughs> agree with all the points you just made. So and I don't they, know how. They may have a good offensive line this year, and yeah, they I, may have a good quarterback situation. Maybe we right. haven't seen shit yet. No, a lot and of maybe. people are crowning this as I, an yes, outstanding offense it. with all this wonderful. I can't believe how excited I am for this offense. How about what? I don't get it. The foundation of the unit, the offensive line, is still unproven. Quarterback, the most important position on the team, unproven. How are you so excited? How can you not be cautious about this? Is it, it, it's potential, right? Which is the, the French word for hasn't done anything yet. Exactly. I think and that's, I'm telling that's you this. it. I'm telling you this. It's because of how bad Ben looked at times last year. And yeah. I'm telling you this right now. Those Ooh. seven fourth quarter game winning drives aren't just going to appear. Nope. And I'm telling you, Mitch Trubisky is not that guy. And well, we have you know, if no he clue. To throw to his left, maybe and he we will have be. no clue what Kenny Pickett is going to do at nope. this level. I mean, Ben won, pulled some games out of his ass last yep. year on sure know how because he knew what the fuck was going to happen on experience because he'd made that mistake before and didn't make it again this time. And yeah, he didn't look good. I mean, from a physical ability standpoint, I agree with you. You're dead right. He did not look good. But he had it upstairs, and that's how he made it work. And I'm sure he still thinks he could do it now. 
and probably you, could. You never but lose he, that. He's when not going to get better. That's no, the thing. No. At this stage in the game, Ben is not going to get no. better. It is time for Ben to go ahead and hang it up. And if this whole thing where Jerry Dulac hasn't come back and corrected himself yet, but I, I still think he will at some he point. Should. That, you know, there's bad blood between Ben and the Steelers and the Steelers pushed him out and all, whatever. It was time. It was time. I mean, it might have been time the year before, honestly. Right. right. Ben, ben didn't look good last year. Let's just say it. He didn't. Let me a- ask this. This is this is what I wanted to get to as far as the schedule and the quarterbacks. Um, Ian, what? let's just assume that Pickett looks good in camp, but Mike Tomlin thinks, you know what, I, I'm going to go with Trubisky. I got more experience here. You know, uh, tough schedule, blah, blah, blah. All things well, being equal, wouldn't you? Well, r- right. All things being equal, typically you go with the rookie. But what, what I'm getting at is what has to happen over those first six to eight games before the bye for Tomlin to all of a sudden decide I'm going with Pickett or maybe I'm staying with Trubisky. I mean, are they sitting at like four and four? Are they three and five? I, I What do you think has to happen for something big to occur there? I think a lot of it is confidence. I mean, if if Trubisky is out there, yeah. to borrow a phrase from Sam Darnold, seeing ghosts, mm-hmm. then it's a lot easier to pull the plug, right? Let's not forget, Tomlin pulled the plug on Mason Rudolph in favor of Duck friggin' Hodges because Mason Rudolph was terrified to throw the football. Right like decision. That, that first half against that the Bengals in that game, mm-hmm. Rudolph was looked terrified out there. And nothing was happening. And it wasn't he just did get that hit game. in the head a week yeah, he, before. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. But still, he. I, I mean, mean, you know, I, I, it broke Ben's nose. He shouldn't. I don't even think Mason should have started that Bengals game. Yeah, probably should. I, I, I really yeah. don't. I, but, I like the way you guys say Bengals a lot better when you drink because you call them the Bangles. 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 Hey, man. To your point, Ian. Go ahead. Susanna to, Hoffs, by the way. Yeah. God bless to, her. Yes. Right. <laughs> to my point, you know. We've seen, I'll paraphrase this, good in quotes Mitch Trubisky with the Bears yeah. when he has a running game, when you know he feels confident throwing the ball to his right. Things like that are working, right? When, when he, can he rolls use, left. When he, can use, <laughs> when he can use play action to you know narrow the field and simplify reads and things like that, he can be okay. He can put points on the board. But that being it, when he can play with a lead, Trubisky is not a guy that's going to lead you back from behind. And, and that's the thing is if if the defense is hemorrhaging early leads like this defense has done in the past, we've spotted a bunch of teams, mm-hmm. 10, 14, 21 points in the fourth, first quarter. Then, you know, maybe you're just like, hey, what the hell? Let's see what Pickett can do. Right. But I think a lot of it is is. If Trubisky's playing without confidence, if he if Trubisky's playing with confidence and leading the team, you know, and and moving them up and down the field, mm-hmm. then they probably stick with him as long as they think he's the better option. But you know, if he's if he's throwing pick after pick after pick, and, and Trubisky's a guy who's a lot like Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler could throw four interceptions one week and four touchdowns the next week. Yeah. It was yeah, just – and Trubisky's a lot like that. He could throw four picks one week and come back and throw four touchdowns the next week. Yeah. Also, Trubisky could throw four picks and three touchdowns in the same damn same game, game because right. that's just kind of how he is. Nope. So, you know, it, at some point there's that risk-reward factor. And it, if the season goes poorly and you're like, the season is lost, let's get Pickett some experience, then yeah, you go to him. Um, because Trubisky's on a two-year deal. Mm-hmm. The biggest, and we've said this before and again, the biggest market inefficiency in the NFL is having a quarterback on his rookie contract. If you draft a guy in the first round, you probably want to figure out what you have there before the end of his rookie year. Yeah. You know, Even if it's just, hey, we lost to the Raiders on Christmas Eve, and now we're eliminated from the playoffs. We're going to start them against Baltimore and Cleveland just to see what happens, right? You know, at some point, if you're out of the playoff race, if Trubisky isn't doing it, then yeah. Or the other possibility is Pickett just outplays him during camp and Pickett starts week one. Yeah, well, you, ne- you never know. It's possible. 
It's I, the I, possibility exists. I'm not. I'm not ruling anything out. Yeah. Um, this is this is going to be know, the most. I'm like, ruling that one out, but sure. This is going to be the most <laughs> meaningful preseason we've had in a long time. And speaking of which, we don't play the Panthers in the preseason this year. That might have been the biggest shocker of all in this First schedule. First time since There's 2003. No, yeah, no Carolina on the preseason. Oh, we don't schedule. have a fourth preseason game. Right, right. So, yeah. We, we did last year, though, and there was only three. But I know. Right, because of the Hall of Fame We had the Hall of Fame game. game last year. Yeah, that's year. true. Right. Yeah. So right. they changed it. Yeah. But yeah. we get Seattle this year. So much for those easy easy travel schedules in the preseason. But uh, Well, on their part. Seattle right? away? No, it's their no, coming it's, here. it's in Pittsburgh. What a yeah. dick, man. Not, not surprisingly, Seattle has... That, 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 that is no bullshit. Sense. I agree that with you. No they should sense. just let them play on the no. West Coast. Yeah. It should be like it should be like Giants... Uh, jet, or, yeah, fucking Giants. Giants Jets for Giants, sure. Giants Jets and, 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 and fucking Bills. Lions. We, we or, usually yeah. play Lions and Pittsburgh yeah. and Cleveland. Yeah, yeah and Detroit's Pittsburgh fine. Pittsburgh yeah. and Baltimore yeah. and Detroit. Yeah, should be like teams I, that are close. It makes yeah. no sense. Yeah. Make it easy. Yeah. No, I agree completely. Yeah. Uh, Ben, you you were pretty dead set against the fact you you don't think Pickett will start the season regardless of what he does early on. No, 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 no. I I, I don't think he'll start the beginning of the season, mm-hmm. no matter what. Mm-hmm. One because he doesn't have the arm, he doesn't have the arm strength. If if he mm-hmm. had the big arm, yeah, and he came in and he was a guy you're looking at going, okay, he's got this big arm, but he's a rookie. He's going to need some time. We want to develop him, like Josh Allen. Then you put him in and you play him and you let him take his lumps and you say, okay, he's going to fuck up and we're going to have to live with it, but he'll get better through experience. So we're, we're going to deal with this, but he doesn't mm-hmm. have the big arm. Doesn't have it. So, you know, that being the case. So how do you develop him differently then if he's, if he doesn't have that big arm, you give him a lot of reps in practice as many as you possibly can. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe maybe you you sit Trubisky on Wednesdays. I don't know what that's what they used to do with with uh, ben. with Ben, and it, it gave it gave Rudy a lot of extra time during every week because he practiced with the ones on every Wednesday. Mm-hmm. You know, which which mm-hmm. helped him. It, theoretically, it helped him in his development. Obviously, it didn't help him enough, but it you know it helped him theoretically. Um, yeah. I, I, well, so Ryan, what do you think they do with this quarterback situation? I mean, they they spent a seventh round pick on uh, a Lutican, uh kid out of what Dakota State, South something Dakota other, State, South yeah. Dakota State, the Jackrabbits. I, come on, the Jackrabbits. That's right. I forgot. Everybody knows that team. Come on. Uh, I, I mean, Rudy has to feel like uh, you know the third wheel. Uh, on a date right now uh, fourth wheel baby or fourth wheel <laughs> sure yeah I, I i mean they're, they're not gonna do much with him now i mean i don't see anything happening until training camp at the, the spare tire yeah i mean i you know so, so how do you see this thing shaking out right when they signed mitch trubisky i don't think they realistically thought that they would get kenny pickett and they did. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Kenny Pickett is going to be 24 years old on June 6th. Mm-hmm. Uh, if Mitch Trubisky does not show any sort of positivity in those first three games, mm-hmm. and we talked about uh, a tough opener at Cincinnati, and you're yeah. right, Ben, they're going to be fired up and – on both sides yeah. of the ball, they're going to want to destroy us. That that yep. uh, that game at Cincinnati last year was pretty much a whooping. That, let's let's just say they want to do the same thing. Let, yeah. And let you know what? Let's just say that the same thing happens. I mean, think about all the ass whippings Pittsburgh has given Cincinnati yes. in Cincinnati over mm-hmm. the past two decades. Yes, think about that. Yeah. Yes, Mind and West. I, I'm not saying they're going to want retribution because it's a new team, new season, all that shit. But their fans are going to be super fired up. And they're they're going to actually need that. They've actually lost two in a row at Cincinnati. Damn, Ryan Finley. Um, so, <laughs> and so let's just say they let's just say it's not a good outing at Cincinnati. Yeah. And then they come home and they see ghosts because they're going against Bill Belichick. Like he's not going to throw some bullshit at us, right? Um, and then they got a short week at Cleveland against another team that hates us, um, and we hate them. And who yeah. knows who's going to be quarterback at that point? But mm-hmm. let's just say it's Baker Mayfield. 
let's just say it is Baker Mayfield because Deshaun Watson's hurt. That would shock me. Or it would shock me too, but not available. Shock or Jacoby me. Brissett. Or yeah, Brissett. Back up. I can see. Okay, yeah. Fine. yeah. Either way, let's just say it's a 20 to 17 game and Cleveland wins and it just looks like shit the whole night. It's windy. It's early. I would not be stunned to see Kenny Pickett start week four against the Jets. Oh. Because if, if you are in the Jets are going to be better than they were. Um, but I would not be stunned because at that point you have to see what you have. Like you have to see, see that. Thought. I mean, you, 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 you took, you took this guy with a first round pick. When you probably could have put, could you you could have gotten a guy that could have contributed this season more, um, if this like is Tomlin's guy right? and this is Colbert's mm-hmm. guy, as, as oh. they have alluded to, I would not be stunned to see that because no, I I can too I can see that I think that Mitch I think Trubisky that makes sense. Gets, Mitch Trubisky gets incentives the more snaps he plays, they don't basically it's a one year deal with a two year option, it's, and if yeah. he's not doing it, why would you not start? Your first round pick. If you believe, like, if you believe that much in taking him, why not give him a chance? If that's only if and only if, if they, like, if they start zero and three mm-hmm. and Mitch looks crappy, I could see it happening. There, there are other factors here too to consider, such as the defense. You know, how well is the defense playing? Uh, be, because you could be zero and three, but you could have a situation where Trubisky is actually playing really well. But the defense gives up a ton of points. Um, you you could have a situation where uh, the running game is really really good, um, and the defense is playing well, but the quarterback play is not great. I mean, there's so many different uh, parts to this thing that that I think are going to be fascinating um, to watch moving forward. Um, let me, uh, before we segue away from that, just remind everybody that we are part of the Pigskin Podcast Network, which means we are also very proud to be part of DraftKings Sportsbook. And uh, as many of you hoops aficionados know, the NBA playoff action is nonstop at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. This week, new customers can bet just $5 on any team to win and get $150 in free bets if they do download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now use promo code TPPN bet five dollars on any NBA team to win their game and get one hundred and fifty dollars in free bets if they do that's promo code TPPN only at DraftKings Sportsbook um any other thoughts on the schedule before I segue away from that <clears throat> I, I love that. I'll just say this. I love that little chunk around the bye week. They they basically go, you know, they come home from Miami on October 23rd, 24th, and then they don't leave the state of Pennsylvania again uh, 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 until late November. Um, yeah. So they, they've got the game at Philly. They got the bye. And then they get the Saints and the Bengals at home. Um, you know, that's one of those weeks where, you know, maybe if we're sitting there at 500, maybe we get healthy and, and don't have to travel as much. And, you know, so I'm looking at that as a positive. Uh, uh, Trying I, to win. I, I, I think they're going to pull nine wins out of their ass. I tend to, to agree with what Ryan has been saying for a little while. They're not really any better than they were last year, in my opinion. It, Wrong. Ask Steelers Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm telling you, wait, just it's very dead just wait, just wait, wait until that first opportunity where they can tie the game or take the lead on offense. Yeah, and it's a, it is a poop show. Yeah, I know, I know. It, it, it's not going to be pretty. That you know, one of the things Ben was good at was was taking advantage of the other team's weaknesses in those moments and, and marching the team down the field mm-hmm. and scoring points, which kind of brings me back to a, a point that Ian has made here lots and lots and lots of times. And that is that an effective quarterback, a, a, a viable franchise quarterback is a quarterback who takes his team into the end zone when he gets into the red zone. And, that was Mason Rudolph's failing. 
he he could gain a lot of yards with the offense between the twenties. But when he got into the red zone, he didn't score touchdowns. He turned the ball over too many times, yes. But the, his biggest failing was that his red zone percentage was shit. And if Mitch Trubisky can score touchdowns, he'll hang on to the job. If he's not, and he's he's starting to force it or he's, mm-hmm. he's losing his confidence because he's got this rookie behind him that everybody loves in Pittsburgh – then, yeah, it's going to be a problem, and people are going to be calling for him to be yanked. I don't really think that people calling for him to be yanked is going to be as big a problem for him because Tomlin doesn't care as it is going to be for the fans. The fans are really going to be up in arms mm-hmm. if if Trubisky is not scoring red zone touchdowns. If Trubisky goes out against New England and throws like three picks in the first half, he's going to get booed off the field. Yeah, like in the second half, it's going to yeah. be bad. It, it, it'll be brutal. I mean, like I talked about this last week. Steelers fans are fucking ruthless. Mm-hmm. They they booed Chuck Knoll. He'd given them four Lombardies. They yeah. booed him. Yep. They booed Terry Bradshaw. Mm-hmm. He'd given them four Lombardies. End of his career, they were booing him because he was playing poorly. So, I, you know, are they going to have a problem with, with booing Mitch Trubisky, who's been there for half a season? Nope. No. Not at no. all. No. And it's – it is what it is, man. This is what you signed up for. The expectations yeah. is winning or you suck. It's black or white. Mm-hmm. Binary completely. You yeah. win or you suck. No excuses. Win. It's true. It's true. The, yeah. Steelers fans don't want the labor pains. They just want the baby. They just want the baby. Bring me the baby, baby. Sometimes um, the baby comes really fast and you have to have it in your bathtub. I've heard, <laughs> heard about that. I've heard that happens. We've, we've heard about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It does from time to time. Especially when you're celebrating Independence Day, I believe, right? Yeah. 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 Um, it was the fireworks that scared her. That's out. right. It, it that's apparently right. was. For, for some women, it's Chinese food. Other women, it's Fourth of July fireworks. <laughs> uh, hey, whatever happens, happens, right? That's right. That's right. Uh, just uh, uh, before we wrap things up, uh, the Steelers general manager search. Uh, Kevin Colbert is is technically done May thirty first. We're getting close to that. Um, the Steelers have given second interviews to five guys: um, two internals, Omar Khan and and Brandon Hunt, which completely not surprising. And then the three guys from the outside, um, Doug Whaley, uh, John Spitek, who was with Tampa Bay, and then Ryan Cowden, who was with the Tennessee Titans. Those three have all completed uh, their second-round interviews. Uh, We don't know, A, if they're going to bring any other guys that they've already talked to back in or not, or if this is done and they're going down to a list of finalists. We don't know. Um, are we to the point yet, Ryan, I'll give this one to you. Are, are we to the point yet where we should start really getting a little impatient? And, and Kevin, Kevin, I don't know if he meant to endorse. Who's the guy from Philly? Andy, Andy uh, Weedle, Weidel? Or Weidel, something like that. I think he's had an interview, right? Yeah, I he's had a second interview. He yeah. did have a second? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I thought it was okay. just so, live. Okay. So, anyway, so just to confirm it, because that – I mean, Kevin pretty much endorsed him. Um, so that being said, I'm extremely annoyed by all of it um, yeah. because, you know, if if you're in and, and, and here, here's another thing Steelers Twitter told me. Steelers Twitter told me that just because if they brought in an outsider doesn't mean that that mm-hmm. outsider would get a say in who his scouts are. Holy hell. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> listen, I understand that, yeah. that, that the Steelers have a way, but. Yep. Listen, this isn't like a regular job. Like I understand a regular job, you move and you're going to be a manager, um, and they don't you don't get to just fire everybody and bring your people. This is totally different. So if I'm an outsider and the Steelers said, "Yeah, you can be our general manager, but you don't get to have any say in our personnel," I'd be like, uh, "No thanks." Like, you know, like, have a good day. So right. if they are bringing in an outsider and that and the outsider wants to, you know, build up his own scouting department, I mean, we're we're in, already in May. 
I mean, I'm not saying that like that stuff takes years to plan out, but don't you want to get people in the building and get them comfortable because they're probably going to be coming from colleges. They're going to be coming from other teams. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you want to, don't you want to like give the people that are there an opportunity to interview elsewhere and get a job and sign on with somebody like Omar and uh, Brandon have, have, have interviewed in other places as well. So at this point, I'm starting to believe that they're not going to go with Omar or Brandon. They're going to go with an outside guy. And I just think it, it's un, at this point, it's sort of unfair to everybody involved that they haven't mm-hmm. made a decision because like, we don't even know what Kevin's role necessarily is going to be. And it's kind of right. like, you know, sometimes you just got to cut the cord. Like it's no hard feelings. It's just business. And and I'm not saying that they need, Kevin just needs to go away forever. But like, I think that they're a little bit worried that feelings are going to be hurt. And I, it's just starting to annoy me. Like, make a decision. My concern is that, you know, when we get into the summer, you to me, you want a guy in there because you know that you're going to be getting rid of players once training camp hits, but you're also going to be bringing in players who get cut from other teams. And, you know, it's not like we're not doing that now and not looking that over who those potentially could be. But, man, I want a GM in there that, it's on top of things, and, and, the, and so and, my and, patience is running thin. And how many? Sorry, guys, but yeah. how many? How many players? The players right now on the team are there because of the scouts, that are, that are the people that yeah. are there, right? So yeah. how many rookie free agents are there right now? But because they were scouted by a current scout, that if a, if an outsider came in, that scout might not even be there. Mm-hmm. Like it's like mm-hmm. it's it's just like like what do you what do you what are you really doing? You know, and and if and and I mean, even if you know, I, I get understand and I appreciate them doing their due diligence, but like, like I don't know. I just think that I don't know. I they need to make up their mind sooner rather yeah. than later. Yeah, Ian, where are you on this? Are you still in the patient category, or? I mean, you know, they got to make a decision at some point in time, and I think Ryan's absolutely right that sooner rather than later is better because not only do you have to make personnel decisions here. But there's contract decisions coming up with extensions and things like that that, um, you know, and, and this is one of the reasons why I was a little surprised. Well, maybe I shouldn't say surprised. One of the reasons I thought they might wait on a quarterback this year is with a new GM coming in next year. If you draft a quarterback this year, you're essentially tying that GM to a quarterback he didn't draft. Unless mm-hmm. you go with Brandon or Omar, who are involved in the whole scouting process, mm-hmm. then they have some familiarity and comfortability with w- what went into that pick. Right. If you bring in a guy from the outside, you don't know how he felt about Kenny Pickett. Um, and that as, was my argument from as day one. Ben said earlier in yep. the podcast correctly: quarterback is the most important position on the football field, yep. and you know, for better or worse. GMs and head coaches get judged on their quarterback decisions, whether it's drafting or signing or, you know, letting a guy go in free Playing agency or, or how or they play or whatever anything. it is. Yeah. Or, anything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. Russell Wilson lights it up in Denver, like those Seattle guys are going to look like assholes. Um, you know, yeah, and, they look like assholes anyway. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> he went to two Super Bowls. What is their problem? Um, yeah, but he probably should have won two Super Bowls. But if they just handed off to Marshawn, never mind. Um, yeah. But but at any rate, you know, like it, for better or worse, GMs and to some extent head coaches, GMs get judged on how they draft quarterbacks. Head coaches yes. get judged on how they play quarterbacks. And that just is the nature of the league, right? It is what no it question. is. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you, if you bring a guy like White or somebody else in from the outside or Whaley, I know those guys have Pittsburgh ties, but they weren't necessarily involved in scouting Kenny Pickett. And then, you know, uh, how long are they yeah. willing to stick with them? And, you know, and it just, it, it, it could, it could set you back a ways. Like you draft a quarterback, you want to at least, play him out his rookie contract. If he stinks, you cut bait, you try again, right? That's just kind of how the league goes. The Steelers were stuck in quarterback purgatory from when Terry Bradshaw retired until 2004. So basically for 20 years, 21 years. years. Yeah. So 
it's not like we've never been in quarterback purgatory before, but it sucks. It's an <laughs> awful place to be. Yes, you know, it is. It's, it's, you, you might get a guy who can lead you to the playoffs if you have a good enough defense. You might get mm-hmm. a guy like Neil O'Donnell. You might get a guy who can even lead you to some AFC championship games like Cordell Stewart. Yep. But you need that guy who can take you over that hump. And I don't think Kenny Pickett's that guy that can take you over that hump. I hope he is. I sincerely oh, God, hope yes. that he is. But I'm not convinced he's that guy that can take you over that hump. Um, but, you know, I don't think there was that guy in this quarterback class. Um, no, so, so we'll either. see what happens, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, but yeah I, I agree that long story short, there's a lot of high level decisions that are going to need to be made here between contracts, between building a scouting staff, between pr- not only college scouting, but pro scouting. I mean, Colbert got asked before the draft about analytics and he said that they counted it a lot more in their pro scouting than in their college scouting. So, you know, the, the Steelers scout other pro teams so that when guys get cut, because that's going to happen, yep. you know, we're going to hit this June 1st deadline. Exactly what I'm talking guys about. are going to start to get cut yep. and it's going to be like, hey, do we want to sign this guy? We don't have a GM. We don't know. What's going to, you know, so they're, they're going to need to make some decisions here relatively soon. Yes. Yeah. Ben, where, where's your patience level on this? Uh, I, I disagree. I think with Ryan, I think the longer this thing goes on, the more likely it is to be either Brandon hunt or Omar Khan. Um, Hmm. I mean, there's not a lot of history to go on, frankly, in the last 30 years, the Steelers have had two GMs and, and the last guy wasn't even a GM. He was director of football operations, Tom Donahoe. Um, Donahoe worked for the Steelers first as a scout and then as his director of, of uh, pro personnel before he became director of football operations in 91. And then they brought, uh, they brought Colbert in Colbert. They knew they had familiarity with he'd been he a scout from Pittsburgh. He'd been a yeah. scout in Pittsburgh. And then he was, you know, one of the higher ups in Detroit at the time. And they brought him back in because they liked his mindset and they felt that he would understand them and he would understand them. They would understand him. Blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. But uh, I think, I just think the longer this thing drags on, the more likely it is that they, they go with the internal candidate. If they had, I think if they had somebody from the outside who really knocked their socks off at this point, they would have hired him. They, they they would have hired the Mike Tomlin in 2006 who came in as kind of the the the, the last second candidate who just blew them away in their, in the interview process and they went okay this guy's a comer he's gonna be a head coach soon mm-hmm. enough and anyway let's just hire him let's just be done with it and hire him he's obviously going to be that guy anyway maybe he's not that guy today but he's gonna be so they they brought him in at 35 years old or whatever the fuck he was. Yeah. Um you know, and I I I just think I think that Art maybe is looking and I'm speculating totally. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. Nobody's given me any insight at all. Everybody I've talked to is like, I don't know. I don't know. All right. <laughs> Keep they're keeping quiet. Yeah. You know. So I I am speculating. <clears throat> I just I think that Art was looking for somebody that was just going to blow him away. That's just my instinct. He just kept happened. talking to people and kept talking to people and kept talking to people. And he was looking for somebody that, that was just going to blow him away in the interview process. And it didn't happen and it hasn't happened yet. And so he's going back and he's talking to people again. And it's not really happening either. And so he's going to go with one of the guys in house. And I, I hope it's, yeah. I hope it's Brandon hunt but, you know, I, because he's been, in, he's been more involved with scouting players scouting. and selecting players than somebody like Omar and you know, Omar's a numbers guy and you know, God bless him. He can keep doing that. But I, I just it, selecting the players to me yeah. is a lot more important. Picking out the groceries is a lot more important in terms of, you know, the way the recipe mm-hmm. comes out mm-hmm. than, than what you paid for them. Well, I, I, I'm torn. I, I was, 
I, I could see both points. I mean, I, there was a time when I thought it was a no-brainer. It was going to be Hunt or or Khan. Then I thought, oh, shoot, they are going outside. But I, I honestly don't know. I, I just don't know. Ian, you had one final point before we wrap things up tonight. One final point before we wrap up the show is and my annual reminder that there is no good news that happens in the off season. Ooh, the only news boy. you hear in the off season yeah. is players getting arrested or people getting injured doing stupid stuff. So no news is good news. If there is no Steelers news that breaks during a week, that is a good thing. The off season <clears throat> is long. It is hard uh, as Pittsburghers because the Penguins are out, the Pirates suck, and what's going to happen? <laughs> so we crave news, but let me tell you, That's no true. news is good news when it comes to the NFL. Yeah. The only the only good possible news is they sign someone to a contract or they pick the general manager. Other than that, I don't want to hear anything until training camp starts. Yeah. I, are, we, are we doing happy. closing thoughts? Because I, I have a quick rant. Oh, go, go for it, sure. <laughs> what yeah. the fuck is with is with the NFL saying the Steelers cannot have a home game on, on the opening weekend because the Pirates are fucking playing. Nobody goes and watches the Pirates. Nobody gives a shit. No one cares. At that point well, in the season, nobody gives a fuck. Literally, no one cares. Uh, I get it. There's shared parking. But if there's a home game that day. It's difficult and got to make you know that, arrangements. Who, who fucking – nobody goes and watches the Pirates. Who they, gives a shit? Ryan? Yeah. 2013, we 2013 we opened up at home. Yeah, with the Titans. Mm -hmm. Then went to Cincinnati. Then we came home for Chicago on a Sunday night. Yeah, okay. the Pirates were playing. The Pirates were playing that night that day. Okay, okay. And, we, and we literally did a, a press conference to basically tell people how to fucking drive. <laughs> um, and and I, I'm not even kidding you. <laughs> Bert, because no, people, Bert, people Bert was the spot. Bert literally did yeah. a press conference. Yeah, because like, people came together. and parked for the Pirates game, and parked in the lots, and then tailgated the entire yes. day, and were so, drunk off their ass for that. <laughs> so yes, yes, I, was, I, was, I remember are, it. Yeah, there are a variety of issues at play there. There's now, political issues. There are parking issues. There was good Mark. But the, the the Pirates were decent that year, weren't they? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So there, there was. was a, at least some crowd there. Yeah. Yes, that was the year. That was the year that they won the wild card and lost to the Cardinals in the in the divisional. Race. That's right. Yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. Regardless. Yep. Yep. The way that there's part there's shared parking. There's 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 just the. I, like I said, I went to the Stone Show last October, and it was a fucking nightmare. Like you can't get in and out of that place. It's just mm -hmm. a total fucking shit show. So. Mm -hmm. And we know that people don't know how to drive as it is. So, like, it was literally such an ordeal. Now, that being <laughs> said, Ben, you're right. And I also say, too, like, listen, like, the Pirates do not own this town. The Penguins, no matter how no matter how many cups they win, never will own this town. The Steelers own this town. So, maybe throw your dick around or <laughs> throw your <laughs> around every once in a while and say, hey, Bob Nutting. Uh, here's how it's going to go. But also, too, this pirate schedule comes out way sooner. It's like it's yeah. way sooner. Yeah, but like absolutely. at the same time, like, like, I mean, I don't know. Do you think Art has any NFL connections? Maybe they somebody in the league can make a phone call or the baseball. Phone call. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it just yeah, seems call, call baseball and say, hey, opening weekend seems, is here. It just Schedule seems the pirates away. It yeah. just seems so like such an such it sounds like such a simple fucking thing to, to tackle and yet we we don't know how to do it the Steelers um, haven't opened at home since 2014 yeah i wow. yes. that was the that was the game ab drop kick or uh drop kick yeah. with Hunter. yeah it yeah. was yeah. fantastic yeah um you know other i know kansas city has issues with that i think it wasn't baltimore for for a while uh, didn't the, they have yes, issues like that? Yes, the Ravens, after they won the Super Bowl, had to open at Denver because the yes. Orioles had a home game. That was it. And Peyton Manning threw seven touchdowns. Yes, he did. Yes, that's right. 
Um, and that's a great place. You know to what? Hang this you know what? I got something I want to say. No, um, <laughs> nah, we're good. I talked yeah. enough tonight. Hey, uh, thanks so much. Make sure you check out SteelCityBlitz.com uh, for all the latest. And uh, follow us on Twitter at SC Blitz. And, of course, the podcast at SCB underscore podcast. And all of us, you've, if you're watching on video, you see our handles all right there next to our names. Anyway, uh, that's it for us tonight. And this has been the SCB Steelers podcast presented by Deck Roofing Incorporated of South Florida. And hey, go Steelers. Ravens suck.